Royal Crown Church of God welcomes you to your place of royalty where you are treated like a king and a queen, prince and princesses. You are before the King of Kings who is your chief host. This morning, as the chief servant and the priest unto God, I welcome you to the king's table as I bring to you a royal feast delicacy that sets men free. And that is title, the center can no longer hold you. Therefore, arise. Praise the Lord. So let's see our text from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, 1 to 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their father, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. And you shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and on living bread. And with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but to roast with fire. His head with his leg, and with the ordinance thereof. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. And so shall ye eat it, verse 11, with your loins guarded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. In Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, it arise. Shall we pray? Our eternal King and our chief host. We are privileged to gather from across the globe this morning at thy table to receive the meals that set men free from every form of slavery. We remain eternally grateful to you and we ask that you fill us, fill every one of us with this requirement that you have single-handedly prepared for every one of us to gain weight that we enable us to arise into action henceforth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Beloved, I want you to know that this message is not a coincidence, but has been prepared by my Father, your Father, whose servant I have been ordained to be. It is not a feat or meal you take without movement. The last time we met, we took our time to stress on the fact that it is time to arise because the center can no longer hold you. The word arise means to rise up, go up, originate, initiate, take steps, make moves, or rebel, it is it. This, the list is endless. From the passage, 
you could see that the Israelites observed the Passover in protest, in rebel to their slave master. Do you understand that? So, like we said, Passover means movable feast, meaning that it is not a feast or meal you take without movement. That is what Passover means. So, these were the people that have been under bondage and slavery for 430 years in strange land, Egypt. The day came when the Lord remembered them, he sent Moses for their freedom. Their travel to freedom took rigorous paths, but eventually they made it. The Passover became an indication of freedom for everyone who is tired of labor and a heavy laden, as captured in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. No doubt it was carried out on the first month of the year. Also, it was done from 10th to 15th of the first month. And this one of today is 13th of the first month of the new year. This is why this message is coming to us at the beginning of the year to enable us to step into actions because planting and investment are done first before harvest. When a man fails to plant, he has signed for hunger in due season. So, without taking much of our time, I want us to see a few things or learn a few things from that emphasis, verse 11 of the same passage that we have read above. Alright? A few things I want us to take note of and take home and learn from. One is that there was a reason for their feast. They didn't just wake up and start feasting. There was a reason for their feast. It was not an ordinary feast. It was a kind of feasting that was organized as a result of their slavery. And that changed their destinies forever. It was a feast that needed them to step out into action by rebelling or originating or taking a step. So something prepared that feasting. Today you are feasting in this world as you are hearing it from me. What is the propellant to this one you are doing? Something must compare you to the world that you hear and there must be an action backing up what you have heard. That is what God is expecting from us. You don't just hear and go home and to your tent to Israel. What do you do when you have heard the word? What does the word remind you of? What action is the word asking you to take? Alright? So, in the same way you are receiving this meal, it is not just coming to you without a purpose. The fact that you have been under the yoke of yourself, the yoke of self-seeking, instead of the kingdom of God, inspired it to so something that inspired this it is a time in your life you understand me to step out so when you hear the word that you are hearing it now what are you going to do are your loins guarded are you eating it in a just eating the way it is required are you eating it prepared for the next line of action that is why the word is coming to you this time expressly. The second point I want us to look at there is this. That they ate the meal prepared with the whole armor of God. Understand? In the same way, you are to get ready for a massive change in your life. Your loins must be guarded with the truth like in Ephesians 5 verse 6, uh, well, Ephesians 6 verse 15. You are fit short with the gospel of peace, verse 16 of that Ephesians chapter 6. And you are staff, which is the sword of the spirit or the word of God, Ephesians 6, 17. In other words, you must be on the whole armor of God. 
Verse 13. You need the whole armor of God uh, so as to break out of self-inflicted slavery and begin to pursue divine purposes. Yes, you must be ready to fight to freedom, fight to redeem the gospel of Christ for which you and I were saved by declaring the whole counsel of God. As long as you are living for yourself and not as the Lord intends for you, you are under serious bondage and you are held by your personal and selfish vendetta. It is time to eat in preparation. So I'm looking at it that at this time, that your preparation should be how to go out to start declaring the word and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because you are heard at this time that there is a need to arise and redeem that which was lost. Like in Genesis 1 verse 26 to 28, the Lord made us or created us for a purpose. And that purpose, we are going back to square one, where we first love. To begin to look at it when he said, and you shall bear fruit, multiply the fruit. Are you doing it? And as you are eating this meal, you are rising up to into action to that. That's their primary assignment. And everybody is an evangelist. It's no longer uh, saying or uh, applicable to say, no, I'm a prophet. And if you are a prophet, you cannot point people to Christ. You are a false prophet. Whatever office that you fit in, by default, everyone is evangelist. So it's expected of you to declare Christ, no matter your giftings. No matter your giftings, declare Christ. And let people know about Christ through you. And if you cannot do that, please step aside. You have not started declaring the message of the cross. And any message you preach that you cannot point people to the cross, or point to, the, to Christ, you are a false prophet. We don't want that. So you are rising this season, and you are rising into action. Praise the Lord. The third point I want us to look at in that place is, they also ate in haste. Amen? They ate in haste. The decision that will determine your future is not what you do lackadaisically. You must be intentional and quick because there is no time to waste time. You must be intentional, you must be fast, you must be urgent, you must be quick in your decisions because there is no time to waste time. That's why the Bible says what they had, they, had, they, they ate it in haste. This is not the time to go back to the drawing table. The corner is asking you to arise. You do not have all the time to contemplate about what to do, but to quickly step into action. We are in a season of actions and not just to go to any drawing table for contemplation on what to do. So, incidentally, the season we are in is calling seriously calling for urgent and immediate action. Every one of us know it. That is the economy of our society this, today. If no action is taken immediately, a lot of people are, in fact, people are already taking their lives. So it is not a time to sit down, to go to the drawing table, to begin to deliberate. It is a time to take action, decisive action, an applicable action. So, with your purposes in your hands and your armor being fully loaded on you, I want to say, arise. Arise. It is time to arise. It is time to what? Arise. The purpose, remember the earth with purpose. Remember also they were fully loaded with the armor and they ate in haste. With all these things on you now, arise. It is not just time to arise, but arise. If I say it is time to arise, you are preparing. But action 
it speaks louder than voice. Let us pray. If you have not committed yourself to Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, you have no business with what we are doing because you don't even know what you are going to arise from or where you are going to arise to. So I want you to confess him now, first of all, before you now have a basis to start from. And pray even as I lead you to him now. Just say after me, Lord Jesus. Thank you for today. Thank you for your word that has come expressly to me. Lord, please save me. I want to be part of this team. Decision makers, people who are quick to take in action about their future and their life. Save my soul from eternal damnation. Wash me by your blood and cleanse me, O God. Breathe upon me the breath of life. Lord, I want to live and reign with you in eternity. Write my name in the book of life. Delete it from the book of death. Give me a fresh start and a new beginning. Satan, I command you, withdraw your feeding hands out of my life. You did not make me. You cannot keep me. My life belongs to Jesus. And I have returned back to him to preserve me. Thank you, Jesus, I am born again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer with me, congratulations. I want to encourage you to keep fellowshipping with us, feasting on the word that you have heard. The Lord has prepared them to help you grow. You understand me? And I know that over time, you begin to see the significance of being part of this fellowship. You can never get it wrong fellowshipping with us. To my viewers all over the world, I want to say that the hand of God is upon your life. As you step into this new week, you are stepping into new doors, new opportunities. Open doors to you and where you have been denied access before now, they have been opened. Go and check. It are, they have been opened for you in the name of Jesus. That prayer request that you have been asking God for, He has answered it. That check has been signed. That appointment has been approved. That project has been approved. That job or whatsoever you are asking God for has been approved expressly. And I make you to say that because you are part of this ministry, the Lord has blessed you and has placed your feet on a pedestal that are higher than yours. You will live to enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living, and you shall not die. The Lord will preserve you. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Have a pleasant week ahead of you. Please remember to share your testimony and keep telling people about what God is doing in this platform. It shall be well with you. God bless you. Amen.